Hey everyone, welcome back to the X-Ring. So I am out here at the Clinton House Plantation and we're in South Carolina. We're shooting the Tar Heel, the Tar Heel Challenge is what they call it, the American Defense Manufacturing. And I'm out here with Brady Lawing. Now, I know he looks really young, but <laughs> you guys need to know who Brady is. Okay, so I've been shooting, Brady, I, we probably met, what, when you were 15? It's been a long time. It's been a long Several time. years ago. He is one of the most winningest three-gun guys that you've ever met. And, and I really mean that. You shoot for F1 Firearms. Yes, sir. You shoot for EOTech. Correct. And I've seen him win so many championships, it's not even funny. Do you keep an idea of how many you've actually won? Uh, maybe seven or eight, probably major and you're, and you're how old now? I'm 20 years old. 20 years old. So when I say this kid is fast, and not only him, is also his brother Luke is also very fast as well. But these guys really, really know three gun. They know shooting, and they're unbelievable rifle shooters. I've watched them throughout the years. But one of the things here lately that you've been doing is air guns. Yeah. Now, I know you made a name for yourself. You were actually on a TV show and won that, right? What was that? Yes, sir. Uh, American Air Gunner Challenge. Season two, I won. It was on the Outdoor Channel. You won a bunch of money too, didn't you? Yeah. It's like 25 grand, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So it's a lot, but guys, the information you're going to be getting from, from this video here, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something that I know nothing about. <laughs> you guys know that I do the NRL 22s and the PRS rim fires. I do PRS. I do three gun, but I know nothing about air guns. Now, the thing that intrigues me the most about this air gun, Brady, is the fact that you're telling me that my feet per second are only going to vary about what five six feet per second from shot to shot with this with this it is it is extremely consistent okay so can you tell us what we're looking at and eventually get to the price point and all of that yeah. but what is this uh this is my custom fx impact m3 this is my pellet gun i have multiple but this is my pellet shooter it is extremely accurate i use it for speed and 100 yard bench rest and uh hunting obviously so i got it set up heavier there's a lot of aftermarket parts on here like the cheek riser and the adjustable butt pad and this top rail and bottom rail all that's aftermarket accessories but i definitely have it souped up for competition all right so let me stop you there for just a minute uh what is this going to run without optics or anything else what is this air gun going to cost yeah so uh just the bone stock fx impact m3 is 2200 but wow. pretty so, expensive yeah it's expensive but you can change the barrel liner so the barrel is made to where you can change the lining in it i mean it's a five minute switch and you can go from pellet you, you, you could go from pellets to slugs or you could go from 177 to 35 cal okay let me ask you this is this thing capable of sub minute at 100 yards all day well we're going to find five that out shot groups 100 yards it will put them on top of each other and you're not having to go through sorting ammunition like uh, ely or center x or anything like that for rim fire so let me ask you this i know that in a lot of your rim fire divisions they actually have a division for air gun so how many shots can you get out of this tank can you explain all of this and yeah so uh this gun has two regulators this is in my opinion is the greatest air gun created currently it has two regulators so this is your pressure gauge this would be your first regulator and your second regulators here the first regulator all it does is cut the pressure that way it allows the second regulator to be more accurate that's why this gun on average is four or five feet a second extreme spread with out of can ammo no sorting we sort for competition um you but we shoot all the time without now when you sort now i know in rim fire you're measuring rim thickness you know, you're measuring bullet weight, things, you know, the actual yeah. cartridge weight. What do you do by, like, you get this, eh, it's exact, okay? So it'd be like, like La Pua, <laughs> right? So you got this exact. How do you sort through this? We just weigh them and then sort them in point two, okay, uh, for weight, and then just make sure, like, the skirt or head isn't significantly damaged. Got it. And okay, we so only do that for competition. This looks to me like a Fortner action, like on an Olympic it's rifle. Very fast. Okay. I mean, so it's got a Fortner shot, style I mean, just... How many shots? Uh, so the tank, uh, this is a 580cc bottle, fills to 3,600 PSI. At my power that I'm currently shooting, I'm shooting 44 grain 30 cal at about 865. Uh, and yeah, it's getting 90. 90 shots? 90 to 100 shots of fill, which is really, really efficient. Do you guys ever push these things to like 10 or like 1080? yeah yeah okay so my 
slug gun, my other slug gun is 22 cal. Okay. Um, and I, I got it. It'll, you can shoot them up to, yeah, about 40 grains at about 1,020 to 1,030. So range. just like a 22 almost. Yeah, like a subtonic 22. My current setup is either shooting a 30 grain of 1,000 or 36 grain at 940. Okay. I mine, and I'm getting 45 shots out of that. Okay. The people who are shooting the 40 grainers at like 10, 20, 40 10, or whatever. 30, yeah, you're talking about, you know, 12, 15 shots of fill. So you'd so have to... a lot more air. In theory, you would have to charge between every stage... Every single stage. ...at a PRS match. Yep. So mine, I could shoot about four stages before I'd have to fill up with my current tune. Because you're running a tune a that's little, down to 900 lower, and yep. something. So is there a way to do that out of the back of your vehicle? Um, or, like, let's say you showed up to a PRS match. How do you fill this? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, fire tanks. We just went to our local fire department, made a donation, and got some old, out-of-date fire tanks, got the proper valves for them and hoses. Yep. Um, and I have a compressor at home that I fill those to 4,300 PSI with. So how many charges can you get out? You're talking about, like, a Scott pack for a breather. Yeah. Okay, how many so charges could you get out of one of those tanks? the small ones are like yay big or so. Yep. Um, I would get like two full fills. I, well, three, t so this gun fills a 250 bar, which is 3,600 PSI. I can fill it full three or four times. Um, so that would get you to slug, five stages? My slug gun, well, so it's shooting 100 shots. This one's shooting 100 shots. Oh, 100 shots. shots. This oh, one's shooting okay. 100 shots of fill. Got it, okay. My slug gun is not... My slug gun fills the 300 bar, which is 4,300, the same as the tank. So I got like a full fill, then I got like a 275 bar fill, then a 250 fill. So a tank, theoretically, in my tune, would get me through a, a One NRL full match. match. Yeah. Have you ever done a PRS or NRL match? I've done an NRL X match. You did an X match? Yeah. How did you do? I did horrible. Okay, it why, was, why is that? Was it the... Uh, was it trying to shoot an air gun and do that, or is it just because um, you're not used to positional? Well, so my struggle was the, a lot of the targets were up in the woods. So yep. it, wind was blowing about 25 mile an hour, so I had no idea where I was hitting. Um, okay. Because they're, I was shooting a 30 grain at 1,000, so it wasn't as wind efficient as the people shooting. The 40 grainers. The, yeah, the 40 grainers. So uh, I did, so I, I zeroed some stages. It was, I really just had issues shooting up in the woods and not being able to see where I was hitting. But the, um, and then I want to check the balance here. So it's definitely going to be a funky balance for positionals. Yeah. They're going to be butt heavy. Yeah, so you can add weights if you get the extended rail. The, the new gun that just came out, the, Pen, the Pantera, yep. it's more of like a rifle style. So it's more compact, Okay. And but it has a much smaller bottle. So you're, like, it's made to only get like 12 shots of fill, just enough to get you through a stage. To me, this is way more versatile. It's made to do it everything. The Panthera, when you buy it, it's meant to do one thing, and that's PRS. Got it. What does this fat boy do? This is not oh, a suppressor. Yeah. So it, it is, it's an air gun suppressor. So it, I just chose, that's an aftermarket. That's Johnny FL. I put that on over the factory one. It was just hollow, um, which it worked pretty good. They're already super quiet. I mean, I can sit and shoot a piece of steel 120 yards away, and the piece of steel is louder than me shooting it. So um, that's not a tuner. No. What do you think you about You can tuners? get barrel tuners. You can get barrel tuners? FX now makes a barrel tuner that you put the suppressor on. So what are, what are your thoughts on that? Have you done one yet? Or I tried haven't it? used one. I think it's, it. it's, so it's too finicky. So like if the, if the temperature changes 20 degrees, then your Got barrel it. tuner now is, your groups went from a half inch to two inches because something's not right. Yeah. Got it. Tough talk. I want to see what this thing will do out on the range. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it. We're gonna check it at 50 yards. We're gonna also check it at 100. Right now we've got, I don't know, two to three mile an hour little yeah. breeze, but we'll see what it's like on the range. Uh, because I'm intrigued by this, I really am. What are we gonna be shooting today? Uh, this is a 44 grain 30 cal pellet. This will move about an inch in a one mile an hour wind at 100. All right, so we're out at the 50 yard range. I do apologize for the generator noise, but I can't do anything about that. We have set a bench rest target up right there at 50 yards exactly. So we're gonna check it at 50 as well as 100. I'm going to have Brady go through the sequence. I do have a target cam down range to be able to see how it does. So we're putting him on the pressure. He's done not a single shot out here. It's a clean target. I'll probably shoot one to clear it out, you said. Yeah, and then reset uh, the we'll go from there to reset the plenum. Here we go. All right, so real quick, a couple more important things to mention. The Power Plenum 720 right here, that is a 72cc storage plenum. So 
the air comes from the bottle through the first regulator into this plenum and then through the second regulator, regulator and dumps into the, the barrel for the shot. The barrel is a bullpup so it comes all the way back to here. So this is the holding tank for the air right before it dumps into the barrel. Now you mentioned something about this hammer. <clears throat> yeah, so the hammer spring, this is all the adjustments that you have to fine tune the hammer spring. What the hammer spring does is it hits depending on how hard it hits, depending on how long the valve stays open. You want the plenum and the hammer spring to be in harmony. So whatever your this regulator is set at, mine this one is set at nine like 96 bar, which is like really low. This is kind of right in the middle. It's tuned properly. I won't go into all that right now, but they're in harmony. So they have the best balance of accuracy, power, and efficiency of air, and also just the gun being in harmony, the harmonic wave is really important when the pellet leaves Couldn't the barrel. Couldn't find a proper rear bag for them, but I do want to see what the capability of this is at 50 yards. So when you look through, I don't know if you're familiar with bench rest targets, but Brady on the top left corner, uh, that is called the S target or cider target. Let's go ahead and do your first shots there. Right. Uh, and then once you're like, hey, it's good, then let's do a five shot group in the middle top target. Sounds Sound good. good? Yep. Awesome. Explain to us what you're doing. All right, so I just loaded it up. Magazine goes in here, there's a little lever to release it. Yep. Uh, and you want, don't want a double feed because then you're not gonna hit what you're aiming at. It's gonna go way, way low. A lot of the old air guns, if you double fed it, it would blow a seal. The new air guns, because this gun's capable of shooting 80 grain, 35 cal, it wouldn't blow a seal, but you still don't want to do it. Got it. So right now, guys, all he's going to do is just verify because he hasn't fired a single shot out of it. And he says we should be good for about 70 shots. Bullseye. All right, when you're ready, do your best group on target Well, I'm one. already working on all that. All right, go ahead. Oh, the last one was barely, it was four, it was one hole. That was, that was good. Pretty solid, right out of the gate, the guys. round could have just been a, a little bit of damage on the skirt, made it spiral a little bit. But as you've seen, the first four, they literally went in my pinky nail. All right, so before we move to 100, I've got to try my hand at this because I've never shot an air rifle. So let's see what this thing looks like. And you felt a lot of smooth bolt guns 22s i'm sure just wait till you feel this cock all right so we're going to go back forwards that is smooth <laughs> let me try it this way it didn't do any justice we don't have you a bag okay so i've got three o'clock right that uh, could just be a difference in the scope Same hole. Okay, so now it's it's chewing out the center for me. I was a little bit right in the beginning, but the trigger, Brady did tell me this is about a pound and a half. And it's more than I normally run in, let's say, a rimfire. But yeah, that's pretty darn impressive. I'm going to leave it just like that. We're going to go to 100 yards, and I really wish I had a rear bag because that would help stabilize it. But let's go ahead and put it at 100. So keep in right. mind, we're not shooting a 22 here. We're actually shooting a 30 cal bullet. And this is 44 grains. This is a lot bigger than you think it is. And the difference in, you were shooting mills on this as well, right? Yes. So when you're zeroed at 50 with this 44 grainer, we've got to go up about four mils four at 100. Four mils for 100. Got it. My but this slug is, gun go ahead. would be tw my slug gun would be two mils. My pellet gun is four. So the slug gun is more equivalent to a true 22 subsonic. A lot. Close. Got it. All right. Well, let's see if you can give me that sub MOA 
at 100 yards. You're going to be shooting on the top right target. All right. That is technically target number two. Now, Brady, you have your own YouTube channel that you just started with your brother, right? Yes, sir. And what is that called? It's for God and Country Outdoors. We do. For God hunting, and Country Outdoors. I like it. Hunting, fishing, uh, camping, uh, some EOTech videos on there. Um, we, there's a video of us testing the EOTech e the E-Flex okay. uh, as a prototype. So, yeah, definitely some cool stuff. Um, there's a video of how to change the, the barrel on one of these, actually, the liner. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and load her up. So you kind of just roll it in like an AK mag almost. Nice. And then... All right, time to put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, let's see if it... Sub him away, five-shot group. We'll go for it. Oh, it's less and less. Because it's regulated. It is regulated. That one was low. There it was. Might have been a bad pellet on that first shot. Oh, uh, she ain't doing good today. Crap. All right, so what I'm going to do, Brady, <sighs> I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. We're going to move down to the bottom left target. There is a one-inch square on that target. Okay. I want you to put as many pellets as you can, five shots, in that one inch square. Your best group you can in that one inch square at the bottom left of the target. All right. Now we've got one of the best air gunners in the country here, so let's see if this rifle will do it. I'm intrigued by this. There we go. That was same hole. And guys, remember, this is exactly 100 yards. Ah, flyer. Yes, I have four pretty good, but about one in five is a flyer due to like a little damage on the skirt or a Got little it. weight difference. Hey, we're used so. to that with rimfire. Just so you guys can see, that is the 100-yard berm at Clinton House, and we were at the 50-yard, which is right there. All right, so I'm not done with this yet. What I'm going to do is there's a, uh, is that a third Ipsic at 200? Yeah. It's a third Ipsic at 200. I've got Brady on the spotting scope. I'm not going to lie to you. If I get the impact, he's going to call it. I'm just going to kind of move through some positions here. We do have the 200-yard dope dialed in. So let's just pretend we're shooting a match or something. I'm going to go for that middle one. You yep. say go. Is she ready? Yep. Fire. All right, so I want to see how this thing balances out. And I don't have a game changer. Bear in changer. mind, there's, there's no bag here. Yeah, no bag. So... Hit. Impact. That was top right. Yep. Hit. Impact. Almost on the boat. Okay, I'm going to go to this position here. Hit, dead Impact, center, dead, dead center. center. Oh, uh, off left. Yep. That was off left, correct? Uh, yeah, and just low, I think. It looked like it spiraled bad. Impact. Hit. And one more. Hit. Impact. So it's not... PRS rimfire or NRL 22X accurate with this setup shooting the pellets, but it can definitely hit that steel almost every time. I think it only missed once. As far as the balance, um, yeah, it's pretty thick right here. Um, it's not use, It's not like a PRS setup. I can tell you that, but it's it's an air gun. But I'm definitely impressed with it. Let's see if I can get one offhand. Got my spotter. Yep. All right, here we go. 200 air gun. That's money. Hit. Impact. Almost like two inches from center. Right, so I know you all saw this real time. Brady, this was you shooting at 50 yards, and that was a great group at 50. And this was me shooting at 50, which I was just getting comfortable with the rifle. It seemed to work out well. 
Tell us what happened here. This right here is going to measure about two inches. Yep. Um, we're seeing a lot of vertical here. And you're saying that's just from sorting pellets. Yeah, so if, yeah, shooting, I mean, I can shoot, I've shot half inch groups with sorted pellets at okay. 100. So you're just getting some different weights here. So what I would do is if they were, if they were weighing 44.8, I would just put those in a can and then the 45s I'll put in another can and then Got for it. competition, just use whatever out of that can for yep. that day. Cause you don't notice it at 50. You got start it. to notice it at 100. See, I got three right there. Yep. One here and one here. Got it. So those three were the same weight. Those two were not. Got it. So, I mean, as Lighter you can see at, at 100, there's are three. There's, there's your potential with sorted ammo. Got it. Yeah, cause I had one and then it was high and then I think it was down and then over. Um, and this isn't bad. This is going to be about an inch and a half or so. I'll get you a measurement, guys. And like I said, right now I'm still a little guarded against it because I don't know enough about it to make an opinion. But from what I'm seeing, I don't think that this particular setup could be competitive against a rimfire. Now, I do know that there's some information out there I've seen on other channels saying that, you know, the velocity is more consistent, which I get that. But I guess the limiting factor is going to be the ammunition. Slugs. If for competition, slugs are hands down. You want it. You need it. You have to have it for competition. Pellets, backyard, hunting, stuff like that around your house. You can get a $400 air gun, PCP, that will be fine for shooting squirrels in your backyard and letting your kids shoot, but it's not going to be as smooth. It's not going to do that. It's not going to shoot through one hole. Um, but for competition, so in RMAC, Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, there's like two divisions of about 20 grand, the 100 yard bench rest, which is pellet only. That's the only reason I sort ammo. And then there's speed, which I use, have to use pellets. And then there's the, the marksman, which is like a PRS style and that's slugs. Well, you can use whatever. If you're not using slugs, you're not gonna, if you're using pellets against slugs, you're not gonna compete with pellets. Got it. You, but you were saying that you're only gonna get about 15 shots out of a 15 to 45, depending on your tune. It just depends on- But if you're trying to compete against the 22. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be using a 36 grain at 940 with a really high BC. Got it. So my BC currently, I know other people are shooting like 34 grains, like 1,030, but my 36 is at 1,000 or 940 with the current ballistic coefficient are like several inches better in the wind at 200. Now, do you use a Kestrel or anything like that for your ballistic saps uh, or no? I just use stray lock for stray lock, yeah. All right, well, I hope you guys learned something from this. I did as well, because like I said, I know nothing about air guns. I'd like to revisit this again in the future. Maybe I'll get my hands on one at one point and a I can start. Slug gun. Slug gun. Well, we'll have to plan on that. And I do appreciate you guys watching. Remember, check them out if you can. Go and subscribe to his channel if you'd like to learn more about air guns. It's Forgotten Country Outdoors. Brady, thanks again for Thank you. teaching me about the air guns. Anytime. He's always teaching me out here on the course anyway, so it's a good thing. We're having a great time at the match. How are you doing at this match anyway? Uh, it's going really good. It's really it's, good? It's going, it's going very solid. It, yeah. I missed the slug the first stage, but it's it's been good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually doing really well as well. I'm holding in there. We've got one more day left. We both have two stages each. Um, I think right now I'm sitting at third. It's a little early to call that because there's other people to still have to finish. But if I can maintain and I can finish in the top 10, I'd be ecstatic. It's really nice having a shotgun that actually runs. And uh, you guys have to watch this kid run. Once. I hate to call him a kid. He's a, he's a grown man, but he is fast as all get out. Brady, thanks again. Thank you. you guys take care. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. So, I've had four pro MCs, this is the second target challenge, and he is undefeated in TAC Ops, Mr. Brady Bolton. <laughs>